Uh, All right. So let's get into uh, the pay-per-view last night. Uh, There were 12 matches on the show, and uh, it was an excellent show overall. I did not see all of Layla Hirsch and Chris Stadlander. What I saw wasn't that great, but uh, I'll leave that to someone else to review. Hook and QT was absolutely positively exactly what you would expect, and uh, it was five minutes, and it was perfect. Match of the night? Of course not. But it was uh, Hook going in there, selling a little, killing QT. Everybody was happy, and that's what you need to do. House of Black versus Death Triangle was, like, any other show, this would have gotten, you know, votes for best match of the night. But because it was the pre-show, and there were five match of the night contenders on the main show, uh, no one's really talking about it, but it was an excellent match. And everybody looked good. I don't know if Eric Redbeard's coming back. But uh, they beat him in the end, and it looked like it was kind of just, you know, he was there until, uh, until uh, um, what's his name comes back? Phoenix. But we'll see. I think he deserves a job. I like this Vintner. I don't know if you're aware or not. Eddie Kingston beat Chris Jericho in a freaking great match. I mean, I would not honestly be surprised if that actually won the poll for best match of the night. Because it was absolutely in the running, and it had the best heat of any of the other matches on the show. Because they got the opening, uh, the opener spot. And uh, for 13 minutes and 40 seconds, they just had an old-school Japanese pro wrestling match. Eddie Kingston beat him with a stretch plum! But then Jericho refused to shake his hand as he had promised, and he walked off. So, thank God there's more to come in this feud. Jurassic Express beat Red Dragon and the Young Bucks. Uh, complicated match, simple story. Two heel teams, guess what? They couldn't coexist. And as a result, the Jurassic Express actually had the advantage, and they got the win, and Red Dragon and the Young Bucks continue to implode, which I'm sure will continue on, as Adam Cole also didn't win the title in the main event. Wardlow won the face of the Revolution ladder match, which, as of today, far as I know, of all the matches and all the spots, the only person who suffered what would uh, be a... I, we don't know the severity yet, but Orange Cassidy got thrown like a crazy person, overshot the target, injured his shoulder. He needs an MRI. Amazingly, nobody else on this entire show was hurt, including Ricky Starks, who got power bombed onto a ladder, leading to Wardlow climbing up and grabbing the brass ring. He gets a shot at the TNT title. Jade Cargill beat Ty Conti. They only gave him six minutes, which, you know, shouldn't have been longer. I can tell you that much. It was not a terrible match. It was not a great match. They made it through, I think is the uh, the best way to put it. Fans are very forgiving because they love Jade Cargill. I mean, she is a star to them. And she beat Ty Conti to retain the title. CM Punk MJF, brutal, violent, dog collar match, double juice, uh, thumbtacks, and finally MGF called out Wardlow for the ring, but Wardlow couldn't find the ring. MGF was distracted by this. He ate the GTS onto the thumbtacks, and then, guess what? I found the ring! Wardlow put it on the ring apron. CM Punk took the ring. He punched MGF, and he pinned him to win. Two-year storyline, MGF and Wardlow have broken up. And from the feedback I received and saw on social media, if you were watching this in a theater or a bar, Wardlow finding that damn ring was the biggest pop of the entire evening. Which is what you want for a storyline that has spanned two years. Britt Baker beat Thunder Rosa. Bullet Club booking by Ghetto here. Interference, 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 distraction, visual pin, interference, interference. And here's what I will say about this, okay? Because I know a lot of people hated it. I believe me. I'm booking. It's going somewhere. I am, not af- I am not afraid to say that there was too much interference, but there's a difference here. Mm-hmm. WWE, you see this all the time because they don't want to beat somebody. And then that's just that's it. That's it. There's no like, oh, it's leading to this or that. Or often it'll like lead to something that makes no sense. Like, hey, you know, we're going to do a bunch of interference and it's going to lead to a wrestling match. Well, they did all of that because, and I, I can't see this 100%, but looking at a match they have on Wednesday and a location for a match in two weeks, I believe that this is leading to 
Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker in a steel cage match in Thunder Rosa's hometown. I think even on her birthday, where Thunder Rosa is going to defeat Britt Baker and win the AEW women's title. So, yeah, you can hate it if you want, but there was a reason they booked it the way that they did. And we're going to get that payoff, I think, in, uh, I think it's March 14th. I think it's St. Patrick's Day. Darby Allen, Sammy, and Sting beat Andrade, Matt Hardy, and Isaiah Cassidy. I believe the whole point of this was Matt Hardy took the L. He apologized. I expect him to take another L. I expect the Hardy family office to turn on him. And I expect his brother, Jeff Hardy, to make the save. And the Hardy boys reunite as baby faces. So we'll see if that happens. Moxley and Brian Danielson. So this is like the freaking best match. And... Bro, they just went in there, and I i don't know. I haven't talked to either guy, but my assumption is they went in there with pretty much nothing, and they just had an old-school call in the ring, beat the living hell out of each other, kick each other to the point where I'm sure both of them probably needed assistance to get out of bed this morning. But my God, was it fantastic. And uh, John Moxley beat him with a cradle reversing a triangle. They got in a big fight afterwards because they're two dudes that are just prideful and violent. And who should come out to headbutt and slap sense into them but William Regal? Bro, I've said a million times, I look at all these AEW shows and they're, they're extremely competently booked as you can see by Tony Khan winning Best Booker two years straight now. And I always try and figure out like where they're going and what they're doing and whatever. And I figured Moxley was winning this match because the story was he'd never beaten Brian Danielson. And Danielson said, I got to bleed with a guy before I team with him. So I knew there would be blood and I knew there would be violence. So it was like everything I knew was going to happen, but I did not, I did not think that they were going to continue fighting afterwards. And William Regal... Lord Regal would come out, slap and headbutt sent to them, put them on the same page, and they'd shake hands. It was like a thousand times better than I would have imagined. And uh, I have a friend, by the way, if you love this match, I have a buddy who uh, who texted me, you know, that this was like just the greatest match he ever saw in his life. And then this morning he texted me, he said, I can't believe I'm saying this but this might be the second best match I saw this weekend. And I said, that's impossible! And then he explained that the other match was Ishii and Shingo. And I thought, my God, he might be right. So I got to watch that match. Holy smokes. If he thought that match was like maybe better than Moxie and Danielson, I just don't know if that's possible. But if there's a match... If there is a match that could be better than this one, I can believe that that would be the match. And finally, Adam Page beat Adam Cole in a uh, excellent world title match. You know, it, the fans were tired. They were doing joke chants. Let's go, Adam. Adam sucks. But hey, at least it was heat. <laughs> was, but then yeah. the longer this went, it stopped being joke chants, and it turned into hangman and Adam Cole chants. And man, they loved them some Adam Cole because when Hangman Page got revenge for being duct taped to the ropes and he tied Adam Cole to the ropes with his belt and started super kicking, the fans turned on the Hangman. I don't think they were expecting that. But he uh, got the win, retained the title. Bro, this man, this show, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but my God, was it fantastic. Okay. Now, there's an incident last week where I lost my mind. And uh, attempted some gory self mutilation. Trini, stop that! No, I don't believe my own eyes anymore. What, what I what, what I think I see, they're telling me I didn't see. All right, <laughs> but that's what happened. Okay, so seven days ago, seven days ago, he shaved his own head. He goes back here. I swear to God, his hair's back again. <laughs> well, like, nothing happened. I'm trying to hang on. I'm trying. To Desperately to grip on reality, and every time I every time I think I'm there, every time I think I'm safe and stable, Duke Hudson's hair changes again. His motivation changes again. Something about Dante Chen. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.